This number on every package of meat, 20560, and so you can take that home and if you want to wait until the CWD test comes back, we'll let you know when it comes back. Came from a game farm, it was donated to us, which is really nice because it's always been a challenge to obtain deer at this time, of, obtain dead deer at this time of year for butchering that aren't mauled on the highway by a car or something. So this really works out well. Um, we will be hunting in chronic wasting disease zones. We will be able to provide lymph node tests for any deer that we kill. First thing I want to do, a lot of times when you take it to a butcher, they'll just cut the front legs off right away. It just makes things, when you're skinning it, a lot easier. So the best thing you can do is just have a sharp knife. Um, so all you have to do is just kind of cut around the joint, and it kind of does its does its own thing. Um, kind of just have to muscle them. Uh, you can also use. And if you guys have questions, just chime in. Um, Your arc load is long. Uh, Does it matter what side you start at? No. Okay. So that's the first thing. That just makes the next few steps a lot easier. Uh, this is called a gambrel. Uh, trying to do it. I've tried to do it without this, and it's really difficult, so. I put your gear without a gamble for like 30 years, and when I finally bought a gamble, I almost couldn't do that. <laughs> what are you thinking? That, that is $25 for the rest of the rest of the world. Exactly. And so this just hooks in behind the Achilles. Um, yeah, point out the Achilles tendon. So this is the tendon right here. Um, so it goes That's right. What you do, do not cut through that tendon. Yeah, or you'll be doing it without a gambrel. That's what I meant. So that's, yeah, that's... Just take the knife and cut. Right now you're being hung up up here. Okay. So, you have a knife? Okay. There, just put it back. Handle first. So there's a couple There's a couple things you can do. You can take the hide off piece by piece. Sometimes I do that. Or you can so we just want to go separate that? Cut right through uh, here. The, the shoulder gets a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, I'll show you guys. Careful because they're keeping the weight on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> Just just Anyone else want to get in here and give a shot? Yes. And I'll just touch with the knife. There you go. Yep. See, so now if you can get it even all the way around and keep walking around it. So the yep, shoulders kind of usually take a little bit of. Uh, work, but I usually just get my fingers. One of the things that Gambrel is really nice for too is you can raise that deer up another foot if you want to. Right. Or just dealing with blood, that's all. Yeah. So if you were on the, <laughs> if you were on the ground, what's the, what are the differences? Hey, I'm going gonna, gonna to raise the deer up. Okay. If, you, if you didn't have... Everybody make sure you can see what's going on right now because this is like the most important trick. So you kind of just pull this and I always, I mean a lot of this meat is just brisket and isn't uh, necessarily the stuff that you're going to keep anyway. So you, I just cut and pull away and try not, I just try my best not to cut into anything that looks like a big hunk of meat. But Lucas didn't tell you this there. So that's what I was saying. This is just one of the most amazing parts is that this just isn't held on by anything. So not even by the pelvis bone? Yeah. It's not held on. And so you just work away and let the knife do the work. And you just keep cutting towards the carcass. 
That's your front yeah. shoulder. And for me, most of this goes into the grinder, and I make burger out of it. This is. Do you take the fat off before you do? Yeah, it? and I'll and I'll uh, maybe one of these guys can show you how to trim. Yeah, we'll someone else wants to sure get it all torn apart. Yeah, but... so. That's the quarter, yeah. that's the first two quarters? Yep. And then the next thing I do is cut out the tenderloins and uh, I'll spin the deer around. But the tenderloins are the, the filet mignon that, I don't know, it's the, be the best cut of meat on the deer is right here. And it's right inside the loin. Um, but what I first do is cut this fatty membrane out. I don't know if anyone else uses this for anything, but I don't. Okay. All right. That's it. So you did a better job than I did over here because you left more meat. So I left meat on here. I think that's due to the, the, having the fillet knife. Uh -huh. Probably the fillet knife is better. You like the fillet knife on that? Well, I don't know. My knife is just dull as a bowling ball. So. It's more of a saw than a knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can throw that over there. So you that the hip is actually a ball and socket joint. So once you get those muscles cut around and you're feeling bone all the way around with the blade, you're gonna have to take that leg and you're gonna have to pop that joint. Um, and there's also a major vessel that's connecting the femur to the pelvis. So you're gonna have to cut through that. I mean, it's, it's not a tough vessel or anything, but there, you'll, you'll see like a little tube sticking out at the end of the femur. Slides yeah, right under that silver skin. Yes. And then it you know, slides in I'm that far or however far it is. Then you got the pressure on the silver skin. The knife tip, the knife blade is facing up. And you just kind of saw. So you get a good start. And you come back the other way, same thing. You got tension on this back here. The knife tip is up. And then you just find another place to start and do the same thing. Now, I, when I took up this big piece of fat, this looks like I.